Hello everyone, I'm David Mash, and welcome to this series on the ARP 2600. We've been taking a look at the various modules on the 2600 and their different functions, and today we're going to take a look at the oscillators and their frequency modulation inputs. So I'm going to start with a very simple patch. I'm going to take um, a sawtooth wave from VCO3, which is pre-patched into the filter. I'm going to open the filter about halfway. And then I'm going to open a little bit more with an envelope. I'm going to give it a little bit of a um, longer attack time and longer release time. Then I'm going to take the filter into the amplifier and use the same envelope generator um, into the amplifier. Take the amplifier into the mixer and Very simple little patch, no patch chords. Next, we're going to look um, at the various frequency modulation inputs to the oscillators. So each of them, you'll notice, has four frequency modulation inputs. The first one of each oscillator is the keyboard pre-patched, and it has no potentiometer, no fader associated with it. The next three are different for each of the oscillators, that is different in the sense that um, different modules are patched into them, pre-patched into them. But let's, uh, let's explore the, um, the different inputs. And I'm going to start with a minus 10 voltage from the voltage processor. I'm going to put it fully into the inverter, and that gives me a 10 volt output. I'm going to patch that into the frequency modulation input of this third VCO, which we're using for our sound. And if I play a note, and then I'm going to So what we're hearing is a range of about two octaves. And you should be asking yourself, wait, since there's one volt per octave on the keyboard, and if I'm using 10 volts into here, shouldn't I hear a 10 volt sweep? Let's see what happens if we put it into the next input. more, but still not 10 octaves. And the third one will actually get us to the 10 octaves. We can't hear it, it's too, too hard for our ears. Um, this is really good to know because um, that lets us know that each of these successively um, has less resistance so that we get about two octaves here, maybe five octaves there, and 10 octaves there. Um, and you might ask, why did they do that? Well, they did that so that you could have a different level of control over the frequency modulation. So if you wanted a wider range of change, you could use the first slider. If you wanted a more um, controlled, you know, narrower range, then you could use the third and in the middle, obviously. Um, as well. So um, let's see how we can use that musically. So let's say we wanted to add vibrato to this sound. Um, one thing we could do is just bring in the VCO2 in low frequency mode using a sine wave and that should give us a nice vibrato. But notice if I, if I were to do the same thing with a patch chord and take it in here, We already have a lot there. So if we really wanted a special effect, we'd, we'd use this one. But if we really wanted the narrower, more musical effect here, we'd use the first one. Of course, we don't need to use the patch chord for that. And uh, as Alan Strange once said, the availability of a given patch chord is inversely proportionate to its need. So we never use a patch chord if we don't need to. 
because uh, we're going to use a lot of patch chords in this next experiment. One of the things that we might want to do um, to make this vibrato a little bit more musical would be to delay it so it doesn't come on immediately. So when we think about having something come on slowly over time, which is a delayed vibrato, we would normally use an envelope generator to do that. That's how we change shape over time. We're using the ADSR to control the filter and the amplifier. Um, let's use the second envelope generator, the attack and release envelope, and we'll just give us a long attack time. And what we need to do is to actually have the VCO2 go into a voltage controlled amplifier so it gradually rises in amplitude. Unfortunately, we're already using the VCA over here for sound, but fortunately, we can use the ring modulator as a quasi VCA. Fortunately, VCO2 is already patched into it, so I can bring it up, and then if I take the output from the attack release envelope generator into the second input, or the, in this case the first input of the ring modulator, although it doesn't really matter which one is which. Then I take the output of the ring modulator, which is now the, um, the sine wave through the VCA into the frequency modulation input of the oscillator. So you can hear that Gradually, the gradually the vibrato comes on because we have a delayed um, amplitude rise of the VCO2 into the VCO3. Another thing that might add to the musicality is what if we um, had the vibrato increase in speed? as it increases in amplitude. Um, so we would take the same um, signal, that is the envelope generator that we're using, um, and we would then pass it to the voltage controlled, uh, to, to a frequency modulation input of the VCO2. Well, the way to do that is we take the signal and we go to the multiple. So we plug it into one of the three multiple jacks on the 2600M. You have four if you have the full-size version. That's the only difference um, in them electronically. So uh, then we take that back into the ring modulator. So you can see that we're still at work. And then I can take the last multiple into the frequency modulation input of VCO2. So not only is it um, delayed in its onset, it's also um, increasing in its speed. And of course, we can adjust the speed um, both of the and how wide it is and how long it comes to take on. So you get lots of options this way. Um, and as you can see, um, as you get more complicated patches, we, uh, we end up using more patch chords. So um, we're always looking to uh, be as efficient as we can be in the use of them, but it's great to have a bunch of them around. Okay, I hope you found this little insight helpful, and uh, uh, have fun with your 2600. If you do find this uh, helpful, please check out my website, machine.com. It's a play on my name. David Mash is my name, Machine. I like to play with machines. Um, I record music under the name Machine Music, and you can find uh, 
my albums under Machine Music on Spotify and Apple Music, and uh, also on my website, machine.com. There you can also find more of these videos, and you can find uh, music videos that I've done for my various album releases. So uh, check me out, machine.com and Machine Music, and uh, have fun with your 2600, and uh, be well, stay safe. <laughs>